I had the good fortune of seeing Baba when I was eight years old in 1957. And Baba was a grand, grand personality. Eight years is not a very big age, but it's enough to know when you're in the presence of somebody who is magnificent. Baba was six feet tall, maybe more, and Baba's face was radiant and filled with a lot of love. And so it was a very powerful personality but not one in which a child would feel fear, but one in which a child would feel comfort and safety. And so the presence of Brahma Baba at that time was a loving grandfather, a grandparent, who was concerned about the grandchild and wanted to make sure that the child was comfortable. And then we left to come to London as a family the whole family was meeting Brahma Baba at that time, so we came to London. And my earliest memory is that there would be a, a packet that was like this, and it was sent by book post, and it was tied with string, a brown packet. And this contained the Murleys. And so every Monday, without fail, um, it just happened every single week, this packet would plop through the letterbox because it was quite a packet, seven days Murleys, and I would hear the sound and my mother would be so happy to receive this because that was her nourishment, that was her sustenance. Um, she would read to us a passage of the Murli, just a short one, every night, but my Hindi wasn't brilliant and then gradually I even forgot the little that I knew, so many words I didn't understand but a few minutes of silence and then meditation but Baba kept that thread connected and it must have been not just the physical Murleys but it was Baba's thoughts keeping our thoughts connected with him also and then through my teenage years in 1966, 67, 68 I met Baba every single time we would be coming to India. Then in 68, I was actually staying in India for a year. And so I met Baba three times within that year. And so each time there was a different experience. 66 and Baba would take us by the finger and lead us here and there in the garden. And he would show us everything that was in the garden. This is in Pandavpavan, Mount Abu. And there was this um, plant right by the gate at that time of the garden where today the garden by the meditation hall and Baba said have you seen this plant and it looked like a normal plant but I hadn't seen it before um, its leaves were different but it was a plant and Baba said watch and he put his finger on the plant and it immediately curled up and Baba said this is the touch-me-not plant, and you must be like that. You mustn't be like that. You mustn't let yourself get affected by whatever it is that's going on. And so it was a walk around the garden with Baba holding our hand, but it was also a lesson in everything. That was also the time when Baba first taught me how to speak in public because I was so shy I couldn't speak. But Baba said to me, um, have you seen the picture of the ladder? And I hadn't. It hadn't reached London. Tree and cycle, Lakshmi Narayan, all these had come to us, but not the ladder. It had just been made. And Baba said, okay, there was a young sister there. He told her, you teach her in English, and tomorrow she can speak about the ladder to the gathering. And the gathering at that time, it was monsoon, it was no parties there. It was a gathering of 30, mostly women and mostly elderly women and just a handful of brothers, maybe five, no more than that. And so at that point, I thought, well, let me see. But next day when the person explained to me the ladder, um, it was very clear because I knew about 
gold and silver, copper, iron age, confluence age, through the cycle, through the tree. And so this was more or less that, but also it had everything written on it. So what happens in the golden age, silver age, it was all there in writing. And so I thought, okay, that's fine. And most of these people don't speak English. I knew that Vishwakishore Dada, he was there, he spoke English. I knew that Dada Vishwaratan, who was there, spoke a little bit. I knew that Dada Chandras also spoke a little bit. But I didn't recognize any of the sisters who spoke fluent English. Um, so I thought to myself, well, even if I make a mistake, it's okay. So in the evening, before Baba came to speak the Murali at 8.30, 8 o'clock, the class had gathered, and normally it would be some news, some chit-chat, something that had come in from somewhere that one of the sisters would share. And Baba would come in about 8.30, so 8 o'clock meditation, and then Baba had said just 10 minutes. So that was fine, it wasn't going to be difficult, especially because they wouldn't understand necessarily. And so then Baba had also said, take a stick. You know how a teacher stands with a stick and shows the children what's what? So take a stick and there. So Baba's gaddi was the one next to, uh, on the sister's side, very close to the door in the front. And on the other side was Mama's gaddi, which now was vacant, but that was by the brother's side. And in between, was the gaddi where whoever else was speaking would sit. And they put up on an easel the picture of the, of the ladder. And 10 minutes I explained, and it was fairly simple. And then I looked around at the gathering and now I saw Baba standing there by the window. And Baba was smiling. And so I quickly finished and sat down. And Baba came in. And Baba was full of praise, full of love, and Baba was preparing me for the future that I didn't know. And Baba said she'll be a spiritual teacher, and Baba said, child, you did that very well. And I'd been nervous, but Baba's words calmed me down. So Baba putting me on the path of being a teacher in a very practical way and encouraging me and inspiring me. And then the next time I came, 67, at that point, Baba was having a seminar. And Baba saw me and what Baba called a seminar was um, the seniors had come together from all over India. And the Dimanmoini, Dadi Prakashmani, Dadi Janki, Jagdish Pai, Ramesh Pai, all of them were there. Um, and Baba saw me sitting in the courtyard on the wall. There were no other guests. It was also the monsoons at that time. So Baba beckoned me across and I left everything that I was doing and Baba took me by the hand and Baba was tall. I was still little, but Baba pulled me. And then Baba started to go up the stairs. This was the room above where now there's um, Nirabhai's office just above there. It had newly been built. And so Baba pulled me again and took me up. And then again, Baba was entering the room and I knew it was the seminar of the seniors. I wanted to leave, but Baba still pulled me inside. And that was the first meeting I attended. And Baba initiated that and it was a very beautiful experience of how Baba interacted with the group and shared answers to their questions. And then of course, um, after that Baba initiated a situation in which I've been in infinite number of meetings. But Baba accepting me, training me as a teacher, Baba putting me in that role where I would have an awareness of what was going on in the Yakya and what Baba's responses were, was a very beautiful beginning to my journey. And all this is before I properly understood Gyan. Then of course, Baba's magic and I was able to surrender a couple of years later. And after my surrender, just a few months later, I surrendered to Baba in June and next year, January 69, 
Baba had flown away. So it was as if Baba had given me that opportunity to be able to be close to him and do what I needed to do while he was still in Sakar form. So I'm very grateful to Baba for my life, but everything that led up to the position where I could say, yes, Baba, I belong to you. Om Shanti. Thank you.